to the southeast of the continent now for the latest on this. Malawi's opposition leader, Lazarus Chakwera, is now the country's new president following a rerun presidential election on Saturday. Peter Mutarika came second, while candidate Peter Domenico Kuwani was a distant third. Let's uh, discuss governance in Malawi after the elections. I'm joined by Dr. McBride Kalanga. He is head of research and development at the African Peer Review Mechanism. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kalanga, for joining us. Your initial reaction uh, when you heard this news. Any surprises on your end? Thank you for having me. Uh, my initial reaction is that uh, this uh, development uh, in Malawi confirms that uh, there is huge potential for progressive politics and for, quite frankly, uh, society in Africa. It uh, debunks the myth that uh, Africa is uh, perpetually challenged when it comes to democracy, the rule of law, and uh, governing. So it is a very welcome development, and I think that uh, it uh, just confirms what institutions like the African Union and others on the continent have advanced, that there is uh, an opportunity, uh, potential for progress. Mm. Much has been said about the events uh, that have unfolded in Malawi in the past weeks, about it being quite historic. Would we say that this is an example of good governance? Well, absolutely. I mean, when you talk of good governance, you are talking about the exercise of authority, how an administration, a political administration exercises authority uh, when governing. So issues of the separation of powers, the independence of the judiciary, uh, the independence of the legislature are key. And so it confirms that uh, there is uh, progress in the area of good governance. I, I choose to call it responsible, gov responsive governance, but uh, yes, it's certainly uh, good governance. And perhaps if I go back uh, a step, when we talk about governance, particularly on the continent, uh, what are we talking about? We are talking about how political organizations that are in power uh, conduct themselves uh, in office and how they govern the different domains of uh, life, uh, the social domain, the political domain, and the economic domain, ensuring that uh, they are responsive, they are effective, and they are efficient, and that uh, they are exercising their choices and uh, applying them in an equitable manner. So this uh, is uh, an ongoing project uh, from colonial period, uh, from the post-colonial period to now the democratic era. Uh, the challenge has been to mediate the different interests of various groups, different ethnicities, uh, to ensure that uh, they all attended to and that they comprise part of the agenda of, uh, of the country. In his swearing in or during his swearing in uh, ceremony, this is what uh, President Chakwera uh, said, quote, with your help speaking to Malawians, we will restore the nation's faith in the possibility of a government that serves, not a government that rules, a government that inspires, not a government that infuriates, a government that listens, not a government that shouts, a government that fights for you and not against you. What work lies ahead for him? Well, there are several issues that have to be attended to and challenges. And first of all, there is an issue of managing the transition. This is a party, a political party that has been in opposition for over two decades and is replacing a political party that has been in government for the past uh, or close to two decades. Uh, the second is that uh, there is a whole challenge of uh, reorienting the civil service uh, to make sure that it's uh, professional, to make sure that it's efficient. Uh, there's also the big task of nation building. Uh, the current administration has emphasized that it wants to move the country from uh, ethnic ethnicities and uh, uh, different uh, inter contestation between different groups uh, to, to a united country. There's also the challenge of ensuring that uh, local business and industry is supported in order to facilitate the development of the economy, the building of an economy. And of course, more importantly, there's also the challenge of ensuring that the government, the public investment uh, in the right uh, places and the right priorities. Uh, these are huge agendas for an administration that has just come into office and uh, is, uh, uh, has been, as I've indicated, out of uh, government for two and a half decades. Mm. You mentioned in the beginning of the conversation that um, a lot of myths have been debunked uh, about how the continent works, including democracy. Uh, how would you answer somebody that asked the question, does democracy work for the African continent? 
Yes, the, the democracy is not a static state. It's an ongoing project. So each country, based on its own experiences, uh, apply the principles of democracy to advance their own national aspirations and interests. There is no one particular form that is universally applicable. The democracy, as it manifests in the United States, may not manifest uh, similarity on the continent in Africa. Well, what is important is understanding of the principle. And what it means is that... Uh, uh, government should be underlined by public interest and that government should be legitimate in the sense that it is a government which has been chosen uh, legitimately so by uh, by its people uh, but uh, if you if, if you ask the question is uh, Africa uh, homogeneous the, the answer is definitely no there, there are different experiences and therefore you can't arrive at a different conclusion that you can't arrive at the same conclusion there are, we have different histories uh, both politically uh, culturally, uh, but in my own estimation, yes, uh, the, the democracy is working on the continent. It's about uh, the mediation of the different interests through the consent of the people. A final word from you, Dr. Kalanga. We spoke about uh, good governance and what it is a little bit earlier on, but why is it important particularly for people on the ground? Well, it's important because, first of all, uh, the population has to be convinced that uh, the government they have in office is the government they chose. And so elections are an important uh, part of that uh, uh, understanding. And in the case of Malawi, uh, we have seen how it has, out, uh, it has, been, uh, it has played out. You have a 58% uh, uh, majority for the current administration. Uh, secondly, uh, they, they must uh, believe that uh, the government uh, that they have chosen, of course, and uh, that's why they chose it, resonates with their own priorities and interests and not the interests of the minority, whether a minority as in a political class or a minority as in a particular ethnic group. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Dr. McBride Kalanga is the Head of Research and Development at the African Peer Review Mechanism.